In the last video, we looked at the expected return for a two-stock portfolio. Now we want to look at the standard deviation for a two-stock portfolio. As you can see, this formula starts to get a little bit ugly. And the two-stock portfolio is actually the simple model. As I mentioned, four, five, six stocks, the formula just starts to explode as we add more stocks because there are more pairs in there to look at. So here, we want to take the weight in A squared times the standard deviation of A squared plus weight in B squared times standard deviation of B squared plus 2 times the weight in A times the weight in B times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation between A and B. So let's walk through our example again. We're going to use this same problem that we did with the expected return for our two security portfolio. Our investment in stock A is 5,000. Our investment in stock B is 7,000. As we found out before, that gave us a weight in stock A of 0.42 and a weight in stock B of 0.58. So let's start this problem. Standard deviation of our portfolio. It's the square root of the weight in A squared. We said that weight in A was 5,000 divided by 12,000 or 0.42 squared. Standard deviation of A is 32% squared. Now notice when I plug in 32%, I'm not putting it as 0.32, I'm just plugging it as 32. You can do either way, just be consistent. If you plug it in as 0.32, convert your percentages to a decimal, do that for every standard deviation. What I find much easier is to just leave it as 32, not convert it to a decimal, and that gives me less decimals to worry about at the end of the problem as well. So 0.42 squared times 32 squared. Now I go on to B. Weight in B squared, we said is 7,000 divided by 12,000, our 0.58 squared. And the standard deviation for stock B is 39%. So 39 squared. And now we have the last segment, 2 times the weight in A times the weight in B times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation A and B. So 2 times the weight in A times the weight in B times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation between A and B. And when we introduced the problem, we said the correlation for A and B was 0.24, a weak positive correlation. So now we have all the numbers plugged in. It's just time to go through the math. First thing we need to do is 0.42 squared times 32 squared. The way I typically do this on the calculator is just 0.42 times 0.42 times 32 times 32. So instead of using the square functions on the calculator, just multiply it out. That gives us 180.63. Then I need 0.58 squared times 39 squared. 0.58 times 0.58 times 39 times 39 gives me 511.66. And lastly, I have this 2 times 0.42 times 0.58 times 32 times 39 times 0.24. So let's go through that on the calculator. 2 times 0.42 times 0.58 times 32 times 39 times 0.24 gives me 145.93. 
and now I just want to add those up. One eighty point six three plus five hundred and eleven point six six plus one hundred forty five point nine three. Gives me 838.22. And now the last thing is to take the square root. 28.95%. Now when I wrap this up, I just want to come back and point out something about the idea of diversification. Here we have two securities. One has a 32% standard deviation. One has a 39% standard deviation. I'm actually putting more of my money into the riskier stock, and what happens to my overall risk? It's actually less than either one of the two stocks. Now, it won't always result in a standard deviation less than all the stocks in our portfolio, but oftentimes that does happen because of diversification. The lower the correlation, the more diversification we're going to get and diversification lowers the risk so that the risk of the portfolio oftentimes will be less than the risk of the stocks in the portfolio and it will always be less than the average risk of the stocks in the portfolio. If you look here, our weighted average should put us somewhere around 35% to 36%, but our standard deviation is closer to 29%. So this is an example of diversification, lowering the risk of the overall portfolio due to the spreading our risk across different stocks.